What's up guys, Mike here from Ecom Knives, and I'm back with episode number 7, I think, of how to make a frame lock. This is where we left off. As you can see, we got a lot of work ahead of us, a long road ahead of us, but in the last episode, we drilled and kind of aligned this backspacer, and this is 200 thou thick titanium, or, or 207, I believe it is. At 207 thou thick, we're going to need something special to, to tap this, especially a 256 screw is a tiny, tiny little screw. So we drilled it with the 564th drill, and now I'm going to use a tapmatic. That it, this can be done by hand, but it, I'm warning you now, it is extremely difficult to do it by hand without breaking a billion taps. Okay? I don't have the finesse. I've seen guys do it. It can be done. Uh, but getting those threads nice and straight, i seen the hand tapping jigs and fixtures and stuff to align your taps may help, might help you. But thread form tap is the key. Believe me on this one, guys. Oh, and definitely cutting fluid. I like the tap magic. A lot of guys use Molly D. Uh, I believe is the other one, the other popular one. Whatever you have, use it and use a lot. That 256 thread form tap I was talking about looks like a screw so when you're shopping for this and I got this one on Amazon believe it or not they're expensive the, this one I got for about 20 to 25 dollars for one one of these tiny little taps so no flutes looks like a screw and this is for 256 screws so I have the Tapmatic 30x and as you can see when you're shopping for these guys capacity is M1.5 or number zero to a quarter inch so you'll the smallest tap you could think of to a quarter inch tap is what this thing can handle. For mine in particular, and the way you set them up, you see these numbers right along the edge and this ring turns. So as you turn this ring, and I'm not going to turn it because it's annoying to have to set it up, but it adjusts the amount of torque before it stops and reverses itself. So for mine, as you can see, I got the ring just below the one. If you can without focus just below the one so he's not quite touching the two yet or nowhere near the three four five or six so you adjust that ring down until you get to mine's about the ballpark but here's how you build up to it here's how you find it because I'm sure they're all different go way low okay so go down to a zero and in increase your torque uh, before it reverses a little bit and I mean a little bit turn it a hair or two and try and tap something on a piece of scrap it'll go in it'll stop and when it stops you let go of the drill press and it'll pull this thing out like so and it'll reverse okay keep doing that until you could tap the hole with one or two shots if you go too far you're gonna snap taps like toothpicks so work your way up to it once it starts threading it's gonna pull itself through and cut as it goes down do not let it bottom out you wanna push the quill back up before it bottoms out or you can snap the tap at the bottom of the hole too so just note that so we're gonna get started I'm gonna put get you in frame there just some of that tapping fluid and be generous Get this going. I like to put a little bit on here as well. Just a drop. Alright, we're going to hold it nice and tight. Slowly, slowly feed it in. There we go, it's going. I'm right at the edge of the clutch engagement. See, I only made it about halfway through. Now we'll go one more time. It's going. See, I pulled out before I stopped. Don't let it bottom out in there or you're going to be in trouble. Alright, that's all there is to it with a Tapmatic. So now that we have that tapped, we're going to want to install it, but of course we have a lot of excess. So now, I'm going to install that, but I need the screws 
that we're going to use to attach it to be completely flush mounted. So the screws we're going to use are these Alpha Knife Supply 256 screws. As you see, I had these for a while. If you can kind of make out that part number. But as you can see, $15 for 100. These are the cheaper screws. And I got the two sizes, the short and the longer ones. Now, I measured the head of the screw. As you can see, we're coming in at about 57 thousandths of an inch. So that means the hole to completely recess these has to be 57 thousandths of an inch deep, at least. We'll call it 60 thousandths for even number sake. Now, the diameter of the head, we're looking at, uh, looks like a 161. Yep, a 161. Which wor works out perfectly because this end mill here that I have is from Lakeshore Carbide. It's a two flute. It's not ideal for this type of uh, this type of operation, but it's a point one six one on the nose end mill, so it's going to be a nice snug fit. But there's a problem with this end mill, and the biggest problem is this: there's no pilot. There's no way to tell me how to align it with the hole. Right? If you guess, I'll show it on this side so you can see what I'm talking about. If you guess and just kind of lock it in a vise and kind of poke at it, let's call it this since I just dropped it, uh, chances are you're going to be off and nothing's going to align. Right? So I use this to get us started. This is those, uh, those old carbide masonry bits, those carbide tip masonry bits. And this one measures out at a point one. 7.0 or, or just about so this head diameter here is like a 0 0.170 which if I Just kind of start the hole a little bit. It'll create a funnel in which that end mill can follow You see what I'm saying? So if I just tap it and give it just enough for the end mill to grab on and follow that hole down It will align itself and I shouldn't have any issues at all the key here is you just want to go deep enough to recess the just so to guide that end mill. Now, obviously, a better solution to this would be a counter bore. I have not been able to find one in this size. So, guys, if you have been able to find one, put it down below in the comments and and let us know because I'm sure there are tons of guys out there that could use them. But for now, I'm going to do this method, which is kind of hokey, but it works. Something like that. All that did was put that big old chamfer in the hole. That's all we want. We don't want to go any deeper than that. Just enough with the end mill. I'll show you on this one here. So it kind of gets funneled into the middle there. There you go. You see it better when I turn it backwards. But it's just enough to kind of hold it in place and align it with the center of the hole. Get it? See, if I did it here, it just kind of walks all over the place. I can't even hold it. Yeah, see? It just wants to walk. I can't hold it steady even if I tried. There is definitely a machinist out there watching this and having a heart attack <laughs> that I'm about to do this. So, like I said, this isn't an ideal method. Obviously, you would get the right tool like a uh, piloted counter bore or an end mill if you can get it to align just right. Uh, you know, but not the way I'm doing it. Remember, we're going down 60 thousandths of an inch, so I'm going to watch my uh, digital readout. And I'm just going to let it self-align in that, in that hole I made. There we go. It's self-aligned. See? So it's just going to hold itself there. There's really uh, not much risk of a helicopter here. It's such a fragile little end mill that'll just break. Uh, the corners will just break off. I say that now, it's going to helicopter and cut my fingers off. Watch. So I'm just slowly going down. I got a low speed going here. We're going to go down to our 60 thou deep. And, and 60. Okay, let's take a look at that.
Let me get behind the camera so I can see what I'm looking at here. There we go. That looks like a nice screw pocket to me. I did not drill these holes out yet to a number 44. That's a clearance hole for a screw. See, it's still in the thread. So we're going to have to drill those out, but I can flip the screw over and just check the fit. If it would focus. There we go, focused. Look at that. You tell me. Is that a nice snug fit or what? I don't see any ovaling, any anything, and nice and snug, but I could just gently pop it out of there. Focus. Okay, I'm going to do the rest of them, and then we'll drill the number 44 holes. All right, guys, now I'm going to take the number 44 drill bit, and that'll be a clearance hole to allow our 256 screw shaft to pass through without getting hung up so it could thread into the backspacer. So these two holes on both sides have to get drilled out with a number 44. As you can see on the outside, and this is why we write these things, guys. On the outside, we have it nice and uh, counterboard. And now, once we press that in, do this through the camera. There we go. Give it a little twist. And now it's flush. So we can slide around on the on the work rest and contour everything and give it a nice finished look and everything's nice and tight. So now we can go ahead and install that backspacer. So we're going to trim some screws and we want them to come halfway through on that side and halfway through on that side. So now that you know how to tap holes in titanium and steel and everything, get yourself a piece of scrap metal like this and this is how I trim my screws. And you can put one hole in it, two holes in it. I actually use this for a couple of things, believe it or not. This piece of scrap is very handy. But take a piece of scrap. This is, uh, I believe, 156 thick. Thickness really doesn't matter too much. Yeah, actually, 156, 157 looks like. Okay, so it's 157 thick. It, like I said, just get it close. And what I do here is I drill and tap the hole for a 256 screw. Go ahead and sink that all the way in. Alright, so it's nice and flush against the back. And then I got these bolt, these mini bolt cutters. You can see the size of my hand. They're not that big at all. Uh, I got these mini bolt cutters from Home Depot, I believe. And if you look, they're chisel ground, right? Almost chisel ground. So if I put it this way, flat against the metal, I'm only going to be taking that much off. Let me see if you can see that. You see what I mean? But if I flip them over, see I'm taking a lot more off. So we need to take a whole big chunk off. So I'm going to go this way. I'm just going to clip the screw. And the reason why we put it in the block and thread it like this is you can see from cutting it, it leaves that crappy edge right there. So now I can take this whole block, and you see how it's polished right here. I can take it over to the scotch Bright wheel or the grinder and clean that up. No more sharp edge. And now if you want to make this really nice, you could take the uh, the Torx and kind of turn it as you're going on the scotch Bright wheel. But as you can see, just to take that nasty burr off, let me shut this thing off. See, just to take that nasty burr off took two seconds on the scotch Bright wheel, and now I can take that screw out. And it comes out of those threads real nice and easy. And as you can see, the size of the screw we're left with. About half the size. Hey, look at that. Didn't even break anything yet. Uh, screws fit. Backspacers attached. See, there's nothing else holding it together. Uh, this <laughs> ridiculous looking backspacer. So, we're going to... Where's our, where's that marker? Going to make more of a mess. We're just going to trim that piece off. That's a little too much to be grinding.
Might as well knock some of those off too. Okay, so I just kind of popped the blade on here and threw a stop pin in so we could see. And it's on the outside just so I could draw on it, but it really doesn't matter. This is just going to get us in the ballpark. So, as you can see when it's open, I don't want to lose too much of this flow. So I don't want to just sit this flat and make it a flat handle. So I'm going to kind of contour the whole thing. But we're going to do that in a minute. Right now I want to focus on getting this backspacer in here. As you can see, it's just a, just a mess. So what I'm going to do is, if I close the blade, it'll show us what we have to work with. As you can see, there's not a lot of clearance here. You don't want to go too deep because then the person that's using the knife can cut themselves back here when the knife is closed if you take too much of this meat away. So that's no good. Also, as you can see in the closed position, we want our tip tucked in nicely. So I'm not going to take too much off of here either because I just knock these kind of sharp edges off and clean that up. And then back here, as you can see, we have a little extra we could take off and mark that with the marker. So we could kind of trim this off and shape this all we want and we won't run into any issues. But keep in mind that since we did our screws already, that I want them evenly spaced from the edge of the handle. So right now they're kind of cockeyed. This one's much further in than this one, but that's because I was going to shape this. So just keep that in mind while you're shaping as well. Ideally, you would have had the design all figured out in CAD. Like I said, this was made for standoffs rather than a backspacer, but most of you are going to be doing backspacer builds, so we're going to convert this one on the fly and just see how it goes. This is what you want to see. This is a 60 grit finish. You just want that backspacer to disappear, right? So it looks like it's all one piece now. That's what you want. As you can see, we're still working with this ridiculous backspacer. So what you want to do is get your blade in there, and you only need one scale for this because this is just going to get us close. You might need to, you might need to fine tune this just a bit later. So what you're going to do is get your stop pin in there and your pivot, and extend it all the way out like that. Now gently close the blade. Now because your stop pin's way out like that and your everything's way out, you're going to get some flex, right? So don't squeeze it and think that that's your correct location. That's wrong. It's just flexing in that little bit of hole. So even if I press the stop pin in just a bit more because that's where it's flexing because it is a slip fit and not a press fit and just let it rest on its own weight. As you can see there, that's probably right around the neighborhood of where we're going to end up. And because this is a ballpark figure, I'm just going to do this with the marker. And I'm going to go up to the marker line, I'm going to sand it down, and I'll test fit it again. You want to make sure you're not hitting the backspacer. Do not get too close to these screws. And while we're in there, this, this point right here, that's a no-no. That's got to go. Because when you flip the flipper, you're naturally going to come back and you're going to end up jabbing your your finger meat on that pointy edge right there. So I like to round these out, kind of do one of these. Right now I'm just concerned about getting this to fit. We're going to do all the finish work later. With the one scale, I cut this way down, and it looks like we're just going to clear. Right, so that's the stop position. Now, I know this is awfully close, and I can always adjust that later, but remember, this is rough. I didn't even put a wheel on. This was just 60 grit off the flat platen. So by the time I get in there and clean up that, all those 60 grit scratches with, uh, with a wheel and make it look really nice, same thing with the outside, this is going to thin out. Uh, even more than this so we should have plenty of clearance plus we're not going to have the wiggle once the other scale is attached so it for all we know it could stop up here and we could have that much room so we're not going to know until we get it a little further along so we're going to clean this up in the next video and uh, and go from there so I've dragged this one on for long enough for, for now uh, so we're going to leave it at that for this episode when we come back we're going to do our final profile, including including the blade, so everything's going to align really nice in the final profile. 
and we're gonna give it a nice final finish as well on the on the edges here and then of course we have to cut out the infamous lock bar a question I get a lot a lot a lot is how you cut out a lock bar and we're gonna cover that in one of the upcoming episodes alright guys well that's it for this one sorry for the delays of course uh, I'm trying to get them out as much as I can but I've also been working on these guys because I'm trying to get knives out the door as well so I, I tend to get sidetracked I get into a groove with working on the albatross folders while I'm doing this build video but I'm not gonna forget you guys I'm gonna pick it up and we're gonna keep on chugging along until that knife is complete and for you guys that celebrate Thanksgiving uh, my fellow Americans happy Thanksgiving to you and your family I hope you have a great day I'll catch you guys next time